Welcome to Mom Habits uh, Week 3. We are yes, at our last we, week. We made it to the last week. We are Yay. almost done. We are going to try and form two new habits this week that will again help us become the moms that we want to become. And these two habits are planning and planning a date. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why we should be planning in general. Okay, the main reason that we should plan is because if we don't plan, and we're always going to be doing right is what is right in front of us, the temporal, instead of doing what we have the ideal in our head to do. For example, let's say you wake up in the morning and you know the laundry needs done, the dishes need washed, the bathrooms need scrubbed, and then you spend the next two hours trying to figure out which one you should do. You know, you've got happy baby in the background. Yes. So that's a good thing. So you're trying to figure out what you should do, and before you know it, half the day's gone. You haven't really accomplished anything. You're frustrated that's with true. your house. You're frustrated with yourself. But when you have a schedule, let's say you sit down and write down all the things that you need to accomplish in a week. Vacuuming, cleaning the kitchen, laundry. And then you divide it up on t in two days. Well, then you look up at your schedule on Monday morning and you say, oh, today is the day I vacuum the living room and today is the day I clean the bathroom and you do those things and then not only does that eliminate that stress in your brain of what do I do yeah. next and that takes less of your energy because you actually just do it yeah. and then you have a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. So that's why it's important to schedule because it says in the Bible when we don't have a vision then we perish. And we perish because it's not that we're physically going to die in this area of our life, but we're going to constantly feel zombie-like dead because we're not going to accomplish we're anything not going ever. To, yeah. Right. So that's why we need to schedule. Yeah. And some people say that schedules are restraining, and I don't think that's true. Mm -hmm. I think they're freeing. When you have a schedule, the schedule works for you. You don't work for the schedule. Yes. And so, you can have a really strict schedule or a really loose schedule, depending on your family. Um, my schedule is, I think it's right in between strict and loose. Because I do the same things in the same order with the girls every day. As we eat breakfast, then we have uh, nap time for Glenna, me putting her to bed, and the girls playing by themselves. And then we do... You okay? okay? We do chores. And um, the hardest thing for my, for me and my schedule, and I think that this is a hard thing that a lot of moms struggle with, is that when I hit the chore time, um, I do have different things that I do every day, like Mondays vacuum uh, my living room and kitchen, and Tuesdays vacuum the girls' room and my room and the playroom. But I always tend to, uh oh, <laughs> is to um, hold on. We're being moms. Popsicle emergency. Yeah. Is to get to the chore time and want to just stay fake, focused on all the chores and um, right. not not stay focused on anything else. There you go. Right. Because you do, you do have to be flexible. Yeah. And like Amory said, you know, the, the scheduling part depends on your personality. Right. Some people are going to write things down by the hour at right. 9 to 10 we're going to do this. And other people are going to be more general about it. After breakfast we do our chores right. or after dinner we do our chores. But you still have to even be right. flexible about that. That's why some people are afraid to even make a schedule because right. they're like, well I'm not going to keep it. Well, some days you're not going to yes. keep it because the schedule works for you. You don't work for the schedule. Right. And be, be sure that when you make your schedule and that you do stick to it because that you do stick to it on the days that you can stick to it. Obviously, uh -oh, on days where you're running around, you're not going to be able to stick to your schedule completely. Right. But uh, on the days that you can, try and stick to your schedule and see how much whoa, it benefits your day. Just pick that up and eat it. Right. You can't say, I can't leave the house today because the right. schedule says I need to vacuum. And right. my friend invited me out for coffee, but I can never go out for coffee because I always have to bet. Right. No, that's being legalistic. We're not yeah. talking about legalistic. We're talking about having a vision. 
If you if you want a clean home or you want an organized home, then you're going to have to sit down and write out what you right. envision it being and then break it down into measurable tasks that you can do. And then if something comes up or your kids are sick or they're cranky from the day before, you're allowed to change right. the schedule a little bit. It's your you're the boss. You are the boss. And the employee. So yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have both of those. Right. Things. You have both of those. All right. I mean, we've got popsicle drip on my finger. That's your okay. real mom. What's the yeah. schedule say about that? I liked it. <laughs> okay. So um, our next habit that we're going to um, plan, and I think that this one is I, more than even getting dressed and eating food and making a schedule and playing with your kids. I think that this one is probably the one that people push aside the most. I agree. And planning, it's dangerous yes. to push this one yes. aside. Planning a date with your husband. So That's why right. don't you tell us why it's so dangerous? Why we need to do Okay, that? let me tell you why it's so dangerous. Because first of all, moms, you married your husband, not your kids. And we often get into this rut of putting our kids first and then... We look at our husbands, and you know, the Bible says that we come together as one. And often when we get into the habit of putting our kids first or something else first, then we become two separate beings right. again. And that's a dangerous place to be because we have two separate agendas. And then what happens is eventually those kids are going to grow up. And when those kids grow up and they move out, then you look at your husband and you're like, who's this stranger? I don't even know who this person is. So it's important, even when you have very young children at home, to carve out that time to plan a date. And when I say date, Amory's going to kind of explain yes. what she means by date is a little bit different at my age and phase of life than her dates. Right. So, okay? so my husband and I do a lot of different things for a date. We don't typically go out. In fact, we just really went out. Well, we just went out two times for the first time in probably a year where we actually left the house and did something with uh, that was not at home. Right. But typically we do things that purposefully we set aside time for ourselves. Um, my husband is a big cinephile, and if you don't know what that means, that means he loves movies. He likes critically acclaimed movies. He likes watching all the Oscar picks, all those kind of things. So we like to set aside a a time or a night where we pick one of the movies that he wants to see yeah. and we make we either make our favorite dinner I want to play my dinner. Okay. <laughs> or we um he runs out and gets our favorite dinner from some place while I'm putting the kids to sleep. Not right now. And then um and we like to play Scrabble so sometimes even on tired nights right. when cuz you're really tired and date night you're like, "Oh man, I I'm so tired and he's so tired. I don't want to be we, out of day. <laughs> we turn on a show that we've seen a million times and we just play Scrabble. And right. we laugh at the things that are on the show and we're kind of engaging with each other, laughing at the words that we each other try to use. And it's something that gets you and your husband talking. You might not be watching TV at all. It might be reading a book together. It might be cooking a meal together. It right. could be anything in the home. It doesn't always have to be outside of the home. But also, I just went through this thing where I was talking to mom about this a while ago, was if your husband does ask you for a date outside of the home, don't let your kids hold you back. Because right. I was just struggling with that. I just messaged yeah. mom, my mom and I was like, Seth wants to go to this place and I'm just stressing about leaving my babies behind, mainly my youngest one because right. I hadn't left her and I was frustrated that he was asking me to do that. But she reminded me that he is in just as important, if not more important, right. than, he, than her being happy for, than Glenna being happy for just one evening. Even if it did mean that she was fussy for, for one evening, it was going to be okay. Because I would rather maintain a healthy relationship with my husband all throughout 
my children's lives. Yes. So that they see that. Yes. And have a healthy, then have a fussy, then avoid having a fussy baby for Right. And that, that was the next point yeah. I was going to make. Your children are learning relationships by watching your relationship. And your, your relationship with your husband is what they're going to be mirroring in their own adult life. So it looks a little bit different for me because my children are mostly adulting. Yeah. So at my age and stage of life, one of the things that my husband and I do for our dates are we'll, we'll go to a little local coffee place, Joe and Throw. Yeah. Shout out for Joe and Throw. <laughs> and drink their coffee. And get their coffee. Their hippie honey mocha yes. is awesome. And they even have gluten-free brownies which is awesome for me and we'll just sit there and talk and the other thing that we'll do is we like to go to antique stores yeah. we like to ride our bikes on the trail probably me a lot more than him <laughs> but like, he does it for you <laughs> yes. and so they, they look different and the thing is dates don't have to cost a lot of money yeah. I think Hollywood has thrown us this lie yeah. that if you're going on a date, you need to have fun wine, and you need to have candles, yes. and you need to have this fancy restaurant. You don't have to have any of that. You can have a pizza box and a movie. Yes. And it can be right after the kids go to bed. You right. can pop in that movie, eat the pizza, and just remember the things that you loved about your husband right. when you were dating. And I would also encourage you to... Because we as wives, we have an idea in our head of what romantic is to us right. and what we want to do on a date and what we like and all these kind of things. We've set up in our head a standard. Mm -hmm. But you should also think about the fact that your yeah. husband has things that he enjoys doing that you don't enjoy right. doing that you could try. Um, oh, I can give you an example from one of our team members, yes, that's Lori. Our, I was, I was <laughs> Were say. you going to say that? Yeah. Yeah, Lori's been to the archery range, yeah. and she's got a big bruise on her arm to prove it. Yeah. Just practicing archery with her husband and yes. and doing some of the things that he likes to do, right. and that's important. And so, go, Lori. Yeah. Go, Lori. Go, So Lori. don't always just set up your... Because usually the wife is the one planning the date, and that's okay. Don't, right. don't always get frustrated that your husband's not doing it. You can take the step to do it, too. Exactly. He does not... Be proactive. Yes, be proactive. But in your proactiveness, don't always just plan dates that you're going to enjoy... Right. Because you're going to enjoy them. Ask your husband things that he wants to do and go out and do those things right. with him too. Or stay at home and do those things with him, whichever exactly. it would be. Watch a movie that's going to make you be scared because I have done that many times <laughs> because he wants to watch it. It's a suspense thing and then I just can't do it. So. Yeah. Well. <laughs> but I did it for him. So Good for you. Yes. <laughs> so we want to thank you for joining us on our three weeks mom course of ha healthy ha or not healthy habits. I keep they saying that. They are healthy for you, but of mom habits, my baby is crying. <laughs> Um, but um, go through, finish this last week strong. Don't yes. just die off because you know it's the last week. Keep po keep posting and emailing and messaging us. Um, and we will um, keep in contact with you too. Um, go, remember to go and like our Whole House Facebook page. Visit us at thewholehouse.org. And also subscribe to our podcast to keep getting more and more. Yes, the Whole House podcast yes. on iTunes. On iTunes. It has great information from family to moms to health to social issues. Lots of different things that we cover. Um, so, and keep a lookout for more The Whole House courses. Yeah. Yes.